Chapter 2 is A Strange Lady Magic Elizabeth by Norma Cassier <clears throat> The house was dark indeed, both inside and out, as far as they could see. The mean, peak roof was faintly illuminated by a street light, stiff wooden lace edge, the lower roof of a large porch, and lacy shadows trembled over the front of the house. A broken chimney pointed toward the sky exactly like a long, skinny finger. In the garden, if it could be called a garden, the garden was full of shadows that leaped, darted, appeared, and disappeared, and followed one another in shuddering lines along the grass. Besides, there was a shudder on a creaky hinge, play, playing an eerie accompaniment to the unhappy tune of the gate, and there hung over all a damp, musty toadstool smell. Coldness shivered along the back of Sally's neck as she climbed the porch steps. You'd think she'd have the porch light on, complained Mrs. Chipley, stumbling on one of the broken steps. What with her knowing we're coming and all, but never mind, maybe something's gone wrong with the electricity. Sally held her breath as Mrs. Chipley raised her hand and pulled the old-fashioned bell beside the door. Bell works, though, she said. Funny old thing. Must be an old house, all right. The wind howled and sighed and rattled the windows of the old house. Sally could not imagine this terrible house under any other conditions and wondered if perhaps the wind always behaved like this around here. Beyond the moaning of the wind and the thudding of her heart, she could hear the faint tinkle of the bell inside. She could hear it echoing through what? What sort of rooms could be there beyond, beyond this door? How different her own house seemed to her at this moment. She could not seem to remember it except, except as bright and cheerful with sunlight streaming in at the windows and her mother singing as she worked in the kitchen or in her little sewing room with the bouquets of violets printed on the curtains. Oh, how she wished that she could turn right now and run as fast as she could down the steps along the path and out of that shadowy garden and somehow, somehow, back to her own safe, familiar home. But, of course, there, w there would be no one there at all. There was nothing she could do but wait here on the porch while Mrs. Chipley impatiently yanked at the bell once more. Something moved inside the house this time. Footsteps were approaching the door. A light suddenly went on inside. There, you see, said Mrs. Chipley triumphantly. She reached down and squeezed Sally's cold hand. But the big door slowly creaked, creaked open. Inside, standing in the harsh orange light from the overhead bulb, stood a very old lady. Her hair pulled back from her wrinkled face was gray, and she was dressed entirely in black. Though she was smaller than Mrs. Chipley by far, her face seemed very close to Sally, for she stood in a bent-over position, holding one hand pressed against her back. Sally blinked and stared up at her. It seemed to her that the lady was scowling down at them, though it may not have been that she was attempting to she was attempting to smile and exercise which her face seemed unaccustomed to performing. The lady was perfectly still except for the rippling of her black dress in the wind. She seemed... Let me show you. She seemed to... She seemed to Sally for a moment exactly like a statue. As they stared at each other, the lady raised her, a hand to her gray hair to protect it from the wind. How do you do, she said. Her voice sounded every bit as rusty as the voice of the orange ga iron gate. How you do, answered Mrs. Chipley politely. Hello, whispered Sally. You must be Miss Chipley, said the lady. And, and Sally, she added, looking down at her. Sally nodded, gulped, and attempted what turned out to be a weak smile. The thin, long-nosed face of the strange lady seemed to have settled ages ago into a permanent frown. When her mouth moved briefly in what was perhaps another try at a smile, Sally felt as if it was not the gate but the odd smile that creaked. Well, Sally, I'm your Aunt Sarah. You both better step in out of the rain. You'll catch your death out there. No, no, I'll be on my way back to the bus stop, said Mrs. Chipley. Now, I see Sally's going to be all right. 
She added rather doubtfully. She didn't like Aunt Sarah either, thought Sally. Yes, I've got a train to make tonight, what with my poor daughter's sick and all. And oh, here's Sally's suitcase, everything she'll need for a few days. Pajamas and her toothbrush, a hairbrush, and a nice new pink comb. And we got her we got her at the drugstore. Couldn't find the old one though. We looked high and low. Yes, yes, Mrs. Chipley said Aunt Sarah, sounding impatient. Sally, take your suitcase and step inside, please. There's a draft from the door, and I'm afraid Shadow will catch cold. Shadow, wondered Sally. Who was Shadow? But she did not dare to ask. Thank you, Mrs. Chipley, said Aunt Sarah firmly, for Mrs. Chipley stood hesitating on the brink of the porch steps. Thank you for bringing Sally. She'll be all right now. A small tendril of hope sprouted in the region of Sally's heart. Maybe Mrs. Chipley wouldn't leave her at all. But goodbye then, honey, said Mrs. Chipley, moving impulsively back toward the door again and enfolding Sally in a comfortable clasp. Clasp. Sally flung her arms around the plump neck. Oh, take me with you, she yearned to cry. Oh, please. But again, she did not say it. Mrs. Chipley kissed her cheek and then straightened up, brushing at her own eyes as she did so. There goes old Mrs. Chipley crying. I, I'm that sentimental, she said to Aunt Sarah, who did not make any comment at this news. Mrs. Chipley bent to kiss Sally again and whispered in her ear, Don't you worry, honey. Everything will be all right. And Mrs. Chipley... Chipley's hurry back as quick as you can, and Mrs. Chipley will, Chipley will hurry back as quick as she can. Then pressing Sally's hand, she turned and hurried off down the steps into the rain and darkness. Aunt Sarah had not mentioned tea at all. Why didn't she, thought Sally angrily. Poor Mrs. Chipley. At least she'd like to have been offered some. All right, said Aunt Sarah sharply. Hurry in, please. Sally stepped hesitantly into the hallway of the strange house. The door swung closed behind her. From somewhere in the darkness, which seemed to fill all the house beyond the orange light, there came a most curious sound, a sort of bad-tempered yowl, which caused Sally to start in surprise and fright. This was followed by a petulant cough. There now, you see, said Aunt Sally, poor Shadow's coughing. This house is simply freezing. Come here, Shadow. And out of the darkness into the pool of light, there stepped a very large, very black cat. The cat narrowed, it, narrowed its eyes at Sally, flattened its ears, and hissed. Is that Shadow? asked Sally. Yes, said Aunt Sarah, that is indeed poor Shadow. The cat, golden eyes gleaming up at Sally in an unfriendly way, rubbed up against Aunt Sarah who reached down to touch the top of his black head with her long, skinny fingers. With her stooped figure and her gray hair pulled tightly back into a bun, she looked just like a witch. One thin strand, perhaps loosened by the wind, <clears throat> Sally had brought in with her, straggled over her hollow cheek. Sally, Sally felt sure that she'd never be staying here if her mother knew what it was really like. She was suddenly terribly tired. The end of chapter two.